Hello peeps, welcome back to Sundays with Sparky. How's it going? I have had a, a, a pretty good week, I suppose. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, I hope you have had a good week since I last spoke to you. Uh, I have been watching uh, three movies this week. Three, count them. Three. Uh, but before we do that, uh, my chair's broke. <laughs> uh, it's It's got to that time in its life when it just dies. And every chair, I've had three of the same chair <laughs> and they all break in the same way after about the same amount of time. So I'm going to get a new one that I've not had before and hope that that one's better. Uh, because the back on this one uh, has gone from being like this to being like this. And then <laughs> occasionally it, it does this. <laughs> and you're like, I, I'm trying to watch, I'm trying to watch something, I'm trying to watch something, I'm trying to watch something, I'm trying to watch something. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> It's great. First off, this week I watched Now You See Me. It's about four young magicians that come together to try and uh, gain access to a secret magician fraternity type brotherhood thing uh, by doing all these um, crazy weird uh, illusion y things. Uh, for some reason, I thought it had something to do with Christopher Nolan because it's got Michael Caine, it's got uh, Morgan Freeman in it. Uh, so for some reason, I thought it had something to do with them or him even, but it doesn't uh, at all. So yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what the director's done before. Louis Letter Letteria, maybe it's Louis. I don't know. But it was good, it was a good movie, really good movie. And it's got uh, Mark Ruffalo in it, and Isla Fisher, and uh, Woody Harrelson. If you if you like magic-y type stuff, uh, along with a good plot, you should check it out, because it's great. Uh, after that, I then watched a film, I've never seen this before, and I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Uh, I like the fact that they put on the front, it's called Welcome to the Punch, and they put right at the bottom, from executive producer Ridley Scott. So Ridley Scott was an executive producer, along with a bunch of other people. It doesn't even mention who who is in it on the front of the, of the DVD. It's like, James McAvoy's in it. That's a pretty big, he's a pretty big name. And Mark Strong's in it, and he's, Mark Strong's been in loads of stuff. So why wouldn't you put them on the front? I mean, it mentions them on the back, but I just like, when I was watching the end credits, Ridley Scott was just kind of there with a bunch of other people, like it was no big deal. So I'm not really sure why they bothered putting it on the front. Anyway, uh, it's a, uh, what is it? It's like a cops and robbers type affair. Uh, Mark Strong's character is the villain, and he uh, he does a robbery with a bunch of people. Um, James McAvoy's character has been hunting him down for ages, tries to go after him alone, gets shot in the leg, uh, and Mark Strong makes off with the, the money. And then it skips to like three years later or something, and how James McAvoy's character is dealing with the fact that he he let him get away, or not let him get away, but he, he got away from him uh, and he has to kind of like syringe his leg every morning to get rid of all the gunk and stuff and build up that's on his knee as a result of being shot in the leg and uh, how his life has kind of fallen apart because he's kind of hell bent on revenge and he's kind of a bit, that's all he can think about and it ends, the, 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 there's a few twists and stuff as the movie goes on. Uh, but it's really good, and I was a bit kind of like, well, it's fairly cheap. Yeah, I think it was like, th I think I picked it up for like three pounds. I thought, well, it's fairly cheap. I'll give it a go. I like James McAvoy, and I've seen Mark Strong in a few things, and I quite like Mark Strong, so let's give it a try. And it was actually really good, really good. So if you haven't seen Welcome to the Punch, 
uh, I would suggest you see it at some point because it, it's worth seeing. Uh, and then finally, I watched this last night, uh, and again, I'd not seen this before, uh, and that's Gangster Squad. And this came out uh, not that long ago. I think it was like the, the end of last year sometime, but I never went to see it in the cinema. It was one of those ones where I was like, mm, I don't, mm, I'm not sure. I really enjoyed it, but it's not anything new. If you've seen, let's think, if you've seen uh, the movies uh, Public Enemies and oh man there's like the, the ones that are to do with the forming of the FBI I can't remember what it's called uh, but if you've seen <clears throat> if you've seen any of those kind of movies where they're going after famous uh, like gangster type criminals then it's very similar to that there's nothing new as far as that sort of thing is concerned because most of those movies are all set around the same time period so they have the same weapons they have the same technology they usually have similar characters in because most of them are guys that were in second world war that have come back and don't really know what else to do uh, and it's pretty much the same sort of thing. Um, but it does it really well. It does it really, really well. Um, Josh Brolin as like is like the lead uh, cop, I suppose, uh, is brilliant. And I haven't seen Sean Penn in something for years, but as Mickey Cohen, you kind of like to hate him. He's a good bad guy if that makes sense like you know that if you were <clears throat> if you were in the same room as him you would not mess with him at, at all because he was such a nasty piece of work and Sean Penn does a great job of uh, of, of kind of delivering that to to through the screen uh, Emma Stone just oh, she just brings that because it's, it's predominantly a male cast. Because you've got male gangsters and male kind of police officers. Um, and back then, in the sort of late 40s, early 50s era, <clears throat> you wouldn't really get many females involved with the police service. Not Certainly not as uh, kind of out on the job, kind of walk in the beat type officers anyway. You might get them working in the office, doing calls or whatever but you wouldn't really get them out um, how rude uh, you wouldn't really get them out on the beat uh, so you know you kind of need a little bit of female just representation I suppose in, in a movie like this just because the testosterone otherwise is just like oh my god ugh and oh, Emma Stone, oh, Whew. oh boy. Uh, and uh, for the ladies, obviously, you've got a bit of Ryan Gosling, being his uh, cool, calm, collected self. It's the only the second film I've ever seen Ryan Gosling in, and he actually talks a lot in this one. Well, more than he did in the last film I saw him in, anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's a great movie. I. As I say, I wasn't really sure about it when it first came out of the cinema. I was like, hmm, I'm not too sure. Uh, Nick Nolte's in it. I haven't seen Nick Nolte in anything for since Tropic Thunder. And I swear he, his voice is just like, gets more deep and gravelly uh, as he gets older. It's like, <laughs> it's like, you can barely understand him sometimes because it's so like, like he's actually got gravel in his... Uh, in his throat when he talks. I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, so they're the movies I've watched. Uh, next week, I'm going to go to the cinema and I'm going to watch Chef with uh, John Favreau. I think he's written it and directed it and he's in it as well, amongst other people. Um, I think John Luguiziano, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Hansen. I think they're both in it as well. And it's like a comedy thing I don't know but 
I follow John Favreau on Twitter and he's been obviously promoting it via Twitter sort of with little behind the scenes uh, photos and vines and all that kind of stuff which is pretty cool um, and I thought well there's nothing else on the cinema that I want to see right now uh, and there's only two showings of this film it's like Transformers has taken up the entire cinema essentially if you want to see Transformers you can go pretty much whenever, whatever day you want whatever time you want and you'll be able to get a showing and everything else has got like one or two showings and it's sad because Age of Extinction is going to be terrible. I mean, I, I looked it up on RottenTomatoes.com, which is a, if you don't know, it's like a a movie review site for uh, just the general people that use it. So there's no official reviewers, so you don't really get so much uh, bias. You won't get anyone getting bought off saying, here, here's lots of cash to review our movie, wink, wink, nudge, nudge give it a good one you know you don't get any of that it's just people that have been to see the movie and then they come on to Rotten Tomatoes and go this movie was good or this movie was bad uh, and then it gets uh, a rating of percentage out of 100 and Transformers Age of Extinction on Rotten Tomatoes when I last looked had 17% so yeah uh, I'm not gonna give my money to people who make uh, bad movies I think I've said that before. Transformers Age of Extinction, not interested. Uh, when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comes out, again, I will not be going to see that and I will not be giving my money to people who make bad movies. Simple as that. I mean, if you went to a restaurant and they made bad food, you wouldn't go to that restaurant again, would you? No, because that'd just be stupid. You'd be like, this movie, this 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 food is not of the standard that I expect when I paid this amount of money. So you'd go somewhere else, or you'd you know you'd eat something else. You wouldn't eat the same thing over and over again if it was bad. That's not necessarily a good analogy, but it's the only one I've got right now. So it'll have to do. Okay, so games. I finished uh, The Witcher Two this week, which was good. Possibly the longest credits uh, in a game I've seen for a long time. And if you skip them, you don't get the very end cutscene. So I had to sit there and wait until the the, uh, the very end so I could get the cutscene. Um, I really enjoyed The Witcher 2. The Witcher 1, I got bored. Like I think I got like two-thirds of the way through and I just got bored. Um, and the combat system wasn't very good. Uh, this one, The Witcher 2, combat was really hard. Like, really hard. Um, especially to begin with, because I think I might have accidentally skipped all the tutorials and stuff. Uh, so, so, yeah, there was that. <clears throat> but I loved all the crafting stuff. Uh, I liked how everything works. The only thing I didn't like was the, the dice games and the uh, arm wrestling games, which I think I touched on last time. You can just get a mod and uh, you win every time and you don't have to worry about it and it's a lot easier. It's one of those things that you kind of have want to do to get the extra experience and stuff but uh, they're so frustrating and so kind of random that uh, it, it just it just slows you down and it's just, uh, it's just not fun. So yeah, so that's why I got the mod. Uh, but yes, I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful game. The story is great. The uh, the characters are really good. The voice acting is good. Uh, the combat is not too bad. But I found towards the end, uh, once I'd upgraded all my like weapons and armor and stuff, that it became really easy for most of the things that I came up against. Um, especially like the human type characters when I was fighting soldiers and stuff I was literally just killing them all really easy uh, some of the monsters were still pretty tricky but in general uh, yeah it was pretty easy but highly recommend it uh, so what else have I been playing I reinstalled Borderlands 2 uh, because uh, even though I haven't played it for about nine months I still quite enjoy it and a friend of mine is playing it they've literally just started playing it uh, and I said that I would play along with them and that's fun having playing 
playing it because I've never really played it properly uh, multiplayer. I've always just kind of played it single player. Um, but yeah, playing it with somebody else makes it a bit more interesting, which is good. So yeah, I'm playing a bit of that. Uh, if you saw what Friday's video was this week, uh, Orcs Must Die 2 with Suki. Me and Suki have been playing that because obviously Saints Row 4 is finished now. So we're going to play uh, play through like the main campaign type thing of uh, Orcs Must Die 2. Uh, I'll be doing the first video which is up on Friday and Suki will do video 2 which will go up on her channel sometime this week uh, and then next the week after no next week i'll be putting uh, episode three on my channel um and so on and so forth so we're going to play through the the main campaign of that until we get to the end and then we'll pick something else um and i think that's going to be a standard for fridays um unless i decide to move stuff around uh wednesday i'm doing this in reverse order wednesday we had uh, a new gary's mod video of murder the game type because uh, we played a bunch of that with Suki and Andres and the Magumps and Mr. Shrake. Mr. Shrike, even. Mr. Shrake? Mr. Shrike? I'm never really 100% sure how to pronounce it. I'm going to call it Mr. Shrike because that's how it's spelled. If that's wrong, then tough. <laughs> uh, you can find all their channels uh, as featured channels on my main channel thing if you want to find any of those people. And I suggest you do, because they're pretty cool. Um, so we've got, we'll have a few more of those. They won't be coming out every Wednesday. It was literally just because I didn't have uh, a big deck player to go, because uh, I think the season reset on the Tuesday, so I would have had to have ranked up uh, to a decent rank, sort of like 15, 14 or 15 on Tuesday and recorded a big deck player to, and rendered it and edited it to get it ready for Wednesday and I just did not have time to do that because uh, I had to go to work and other stuff so uh, and then Monday we had the uh, Gary's Mod uh, Trouble in Terrorist Town um, jam lots of raspberry jam uh, <laughs> so yes <coughs> There'll be more of that coming uh, tomorrow. Uh, I will try and get a big deck player out on Wednesday, as per usual. And then we'll have some more Orcs Must Die 2 on Friday. I am going to go, because I've got to edit this, and I might do some live streaming tonight. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, no one, actually. No one knows. Yet. I, uh, I, I don't know. Because I'm, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to go. I will see you next week, uh, where we will talk about more stuff. I'll talk about Chef and uh, anything else that I decide to watch. And I shall see you Sunday. All right. Thanks for watching, peeps. Bye-bye.